Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Sorry for the the crummy lighting in the, the video. I promise you it will get better. Uh, it's real dark out right now. Uh, early morning, Monday um, in 2022. We are going to be heading up to the cabin to do a little bit of black powder hunting. If you've been with the channel for a while, we missed out on all rifle season uh, because my father had passed and we had uh, the funeral and all that good stuff. So appreciate all the prayers and the kindness that you guys threw my way uh, in last week's video. Um, it was just really uh, warming to to feel the kindness that was extended to our family and we greatly appreciate it. We don't take that lightly. So let's go ahead and jump in the truck and quick get up to the cabin. I can't wait to see what this year's hunt brings. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This week we are back up at the cabin and uh, I'm joined today with my brother and uh, we're gonna go out and do a traditional black powder hunt. Um, what gun are you gonna be shooting today? I have a 50 caliber Hawkins, it was a kit gun. And you built that from scratch? Yeah. And then uh, do you um, have any history with that? Any, any my, first, my first buck with it was up here. All right, cool. And then I'm going to be hunting with the um, you know, same gun that I hunt in all the rest of my black powder videos. This is a, a Thompson Center uh, inline. Um, my brother's more of a, a purist, I guess, at heart. And, and it's a little bit more of a challenge to shoot a deer with his gun. But we're going to go out today and, uh, and head down to a road that uh, a buddy Mike and I have been studying for whitetail. And we came to the conclusion, if it's brown, it's down. Um, we've been holding out for bigger bucks, but, uh, you know, we haven't been able to get out for rifle season, uh, really because of my dad's passing. So uh, today we are strictly going out for meat. If you're watching this video to see a trophy buck, maybe we get one. But uh, I, I do have a doe tag. We're going to go out and we're going to take whatever is presented our way. So, all right, you guys, uh, let's head out, and uh, we'll, next time you see us, we'll be hunted on, uh, a, I don't want to give the road name, because there are a couple people that watch from Florence County, but we'll be hunting on public property out here. This has been so quiet. I've sat in this spot now for two days, and haven't even seen a doe, and I'm right in the perfect area to be hunting in years past. I always harvested good deer out of here. Take a look at this. It's an old railroad trestle. And then it's all real heavy swamp behind me there. And it's been kind of scary. Um, I have found one wolf kill so far and numerous amount of wolf scat. It's kind of disappointing. I'm afraid I'm not going to have much video to share with you guys because, uh, you know, if you hunt in the UP or northern Wisconsin, you know what decimation those wolves have done to all our wildlife. So we'll sit it out. If anything comes through, I'll share it with you guys. All right, you guys, we haven't even made it to the part where we want to hunt yet. Um, this place is like, a, I think it's an agricultural study or something like that, that the DNR has. Um, we're out in the middle of nowhere and they somehow got a big rake back in this field. And um, they raked up the field and let natural grass grow there. And I'm, I'm not sure what that's all about. They also have a bunch of new trees planted with cages around it. And it doesn't make sense because they're maples and everything up here is maple. So I don't know why they'd have cages around it. But um, we just started walking in and uh, I don't know if I can zoom this in quick enough or far enough, but you can see that we already see a deer bedded down by uh, a pine tree or no that's windfall hey yeah yeah he's bedded by windfall so we're going to try to put a sneak on him and um we'll see how it goes 
Um, the snow has been helping us out because the snow has definitely deadened down um, our footsteps in here. Uh, with this being a maple forest, it's loaded with leaves. So we're not sure if I'm even going to get an opportunity on this. But I am going to try sneaking up, do my best, and um, I'll shoot him right where he is if we get lucky enough. And if he gets up and runs, then my brother's going to shoot back up. And that way we have two shots going in on a deer rather than one. So, all right, let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing uh, harvested. He didn't even move. He's still laying right there. Let's go get him. You think we should let him lay? I'd let him lay just to make sure. All right. All right. Let's wait out here. We'll give him a half an hour and then go check him out. Sure. Right. That sounds good. All right, guys. We gave him a little bit more than a half an hour. Um, he's all laying there with snow on him. We opted to go home and to have some lunch and we wanted to make sure that we gave him enough time in the event if he was still um, if he was still alive but I can see he's there and he's covered with snow so we'll take you up to this uh, windfall and we'll show you where this deer is. Uh, for those of you that aren't real heavy into hunting this north woods is totally different hunting than what we have back at home. Here, um, most of the deer that we shoot were either glass in the sides of hills, or uh, if it's you know crappy weather, they love bellying up right next to windfall. It acts as a windbreak and helps keep them warm. So, all right, let's go ahead and we'll see if we can get this guy. He's not, he is a buck. Uh, it's not big, it's maybe a spike, but like I said at the beginning of this video, uh, we are looking to harvest meat right now, so antler size means absolutely nothing. We're more about uh, having that clean organic meat. So, all right, we're going to head down there now. But there's that buck laying up against this windfall. And uh, kind of give you an idea of what we're hunting here. Uh, if you look back here, that's all marsh back in there. And this is just a thin strip of woods that's between here. And oh my gosh, this thing's kind of a freak of nature. His body's huge. Um, let me dust some snow off him and I'll show you what we got. <laughs> that's one thing about these northern bucks. Um, his body... I don't know if you can catch it, but this body is just huge on, on this tiny rack buck. And um, this should provide for some good meat. You can see uh, he didn't move an inch. That was a relatively painless uh, death. He's still laying down. And uh, yeah, that'll be a good buck. That'll be some tender eats there. We're going to uh, continue hunting. Um, so stay on board because my brother still needs to get a buck. And we are going to um, 
I'm going to go ahead and film him and we'll see what else comes in this evening. All right, folks, we are back at the cabin in one of my tree stands. Uh, check out this view. This is the last day of black powder, so we are not going to be picky with what we get. I'll show you what we got outside. This view is beautiful. You see five of them. I see four right now, but there was five. That one is really big. So not not a bad sized body deer. Um, I feel blessed to have harvested this one. It was kind of cool, you know, even though I wasn't able to get out in the woods this year with everything going on with my dad getting sick and then eventually passing. I still feel like I had a completed ceiling, uh, season because I watched all my buddies' videos, you know, Mark Pro, South Paul Outdoors, um, Camp Benny. All of those guys got great, uh, great uh, hunts that they publish, published. And, of course, Whitetail Warriors, he, uh, he published his hunt, too. And uh, so even though I wasn't able to hunt, I felt like I was still in the game. And then to be able to be blessed on the last day, finally to see one deer and then have it be a legal buck. Uh, I think that somebody had a little something to do with that. I definitely feel blessed. We'll let this thing uh, age and process for a couple, two, three days. And then uh, after he's been hanging for a while, I'll uh take them inside and we'll process them and that'll give us some good healthy wholesome meat for the rest of the year so now that we don't have kids at home this will uh this will definitely take care of the wife and i so all right folks this is the day after uh season closed officially yesterday and it has been just a rough rough week of black powder hunting um until yesterday i didn't see much at all for deer uh, did you see anything before yesterday i had one blow at me and that was it the whole time so it's terrible when i first started hunting up here uh probably geez it had to be 20 plus years yeah 20 plus years we used to see uh, not a ton of deer, but, you know, you'd probably see five, six deer, maybe up to, you know, eight to ten deer a day on a regular basis. And we would always save black powder to come up here because, you know, for black powder, the deer would be yarded up. And I don't know if we get deer migrating from the UP or what, but we'd always see uh, quite a few more deer. And uh, I don't know this to be gospel, but my feeling is is it's, it almost seems like the wolves and the predators have got this deer herd so decimated. And do uh, you have any thoughts on that at all? That one spot we were hunting back by the open field, yeah. we found four piles of uh, wolf scat. Yeah. So there's there are definitely wolves in the area. And that was just on the pathway walking into where we hunted where uh where there was all that wolf scat so um this probably you know wasn't the most action you know packed video or whatever but the reality is up here in the, you know the far north woods here though we don't have the deers that we used the deer that we used to have last night um when we sat in the same blind and tried to fill his tag um I think we saw up to close to 11 deer, I think the grand total was. 
But everything that we saw came just at that borderline time where uh, it was just, you know, not enough light. Technically, we would have been legal probably to pop one. But uh, the light, you know, once the sun starts going down up here, the light conditions dwindle really quick. And we obviously we want to be good stewards of the land, so we're not going to shoot and take a shot when it's a little dark like that. Maybe take the chance of wounding a buck or whatever. But but yeah, it uh, did. We did pretty good um, as far as seeing numbers of deer yesterday. But I think uh, one of the reasons we saw so many deer is I stayed back here at the cabin, and um, <clears throat> a lot of people on the lake uh, feed the deer. And technically, you're not supposed to feed. That is considered baiting, and the DNR will fine you if you're caught doing it. But uh, we got a lot of old-timers where they just find enjoyment out of watching the deer out of their picture window. And so they feed them. And I think we catch the deer coming from all the, the forest, and they come past the house to go to the, to the lake, uh, to feed at the lake home. Well, those people also are doing it for enjoyment they're not doing it to uh hunt over it yeah so which that's huge but uh yeah, thank you guys so much for for joining us for this black powder hunt just wanted to share a little bit of what we do up here at deer camp and uh we appreciate your continued support to the channel we'll catch you next time on carl's off the grid bye now <laughs> bye <laughs>